Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. January 22nd, Horst Schulz. Schulz is a man whose biblical beliefs aren't pasted on. He lives according to the Word of God at home and at work. He believes employees are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Employees are not mere functional warm bodies. They are valued, gifted, worthy creations of a living God. Schulz established this core value, and upon it, he built success. In 1991, Hotels Magazine named Schulz Corporate Hotelier of the World. He was co-founder of Ritz-Carlton Hotels, and managed their worldwide $2 billion operations. On this date, in 2014, Scholz was awarded the Forbes Five Star Award for the Naples Hotel and Resort. In 2020, Scholz spearheaded a new luxury hotel project based on serving customers. Today's story starts at the beginning of a similar great project in Scholz's life. With influence comes power. With power comes responsibility. Handle these with care. Pittsburgh's dilapidated Howard Johnson was on a death vigil. Its nightly occupancy rate was dismal, but Hyatt hired Horst Schulz to resuscitate the place, breathe some life into it and make it profitable again. On a sticky Monday in June of 1976, Schulz arrived. To experience the hotel as paying customers did, he ignored the door marked private and strode towards the front entrance used by guests. Hey, a uniformed doorman said, come here. Schultz thought, how unprofessional, rude even. You know what I do here? His name tag read Jim. You greet the guests, Schultz said. Jim shoved Schultz a roll of pennies. I keep this here inside my hand. If I need to crack somebody in the face, I'll break their jaw. Shul's mouth went dry, but Jim's uniform, supplied by the previous owner, had holes in it. If management treated Jim with such little respect, it made sense that Jim would treat others disrespectfully. Look, Jim said, if you play ball with us, you'll be okay. By us, Jim was referring to the union. Shul's replied, let's play ball together by doing a good job for the owners, the guests, and you, the employees. Schultz went into his office and it wasn't long until he heard shouting coming from angry employees. Where's that blank? The vulgar name calling was an emotional slap. The secretary rushed in afraid. The union's here. Six union leaders then marched in. Five sat in chairs facing him and the sixth gave Schultz his back. He spoke to his cronies. Ask him if he ever saw a car blown up. Then the rude man faced Schultz. I mean, was someone in it? Schulz denied the gulp rising in his throat. After that, each day at one o'clock, Schulz heard profane name calling. The union man started yelling before he reached Schulz's door. Once in the office, the man complained, nitpicked, and even threatened. Schulz clung to the belief in his own worth and the worth of others. He refused to be intimidated and fought for culture change. Winter descended. Relationship with the union seemed more balanced and for a holiday gift, the hotel gave each employee a turkey. But union leaders called the gift bribery. Within minutes, they called a strike. Out in the snow in front of the hotel, the employees picketed. As they chanted into the frigid air, their breath puffed into white clouds. Scrawled signs read, unfair to labor. In response, Schulz gathered kitchen and restaurant supervisors and asked them to make hot cider and to collect sweet rolls and coffee. Then Schulz and his team rushed into the cold with the treats. Everyone's noses were red. Shortly after that, news crews arrived. Schulz handed a cup of steaming cider to one of his picketing employees. A confused TV reporter shoved a microphone into Schulz's face. What are you doing? Schulz responded, these are still our employees. The fact that there's been a misunderstanding so that they're missing a little work has nothing to do with the fact that they're a vital part of this hotel and I love them. It's cold out here. I just thought they should have something hot to drink and sweet to eat. 
From that day on, the union became more civil, and over time, the once faltering hotel became the place to stay in Pittsburgh. The mayor even honored it, and Schulz even gained Jim the doorman's respect. Schulz said, love your neighbor as yourself. I have a responsibility for those neighbors, to work for them and fight for them. The values of the word of God do not change because it is work. For Schulz, each employee was a neighbor and a valued person that God had created. He said, when we identify an operational function and then go looking for a warm body to fill that function, we are being short-sighted. We are treating people as just another category of things. This is not only bad practice, but even immoral. It ignores the God-given talent and worth of a human being. It depersonalizes them, reducing them to the level of office supplies. James 2.8 says, It is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you depersonalize others or treat them with dignity? With influence comes power, with power comes responsibility. Handle these with care. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.